Orson Welles always had a penchant for pulp fiction. While some of his most notable films were based on literary works by Booth Tarkington, Franz Kafka, and William Shakespeare, he was just as inclined to lend his dynamic directorial approach to crime fiction. Two especially enticing projects that never came to fruition were adaptations of Nicholas Blake's The Smiler with the Knife, which he tried to make at RKO circa Citizen Kane, and Jim Thompson's A Hell of a Woman, an aborted independent feature from the late 1960s. In 1946, Wells's reworking of Sherwood King's potboiler, If I Die Before I Wake, became the delirious noir The Lady from Shanghai, released in 1948 and shown previously on Noir Alley. Wells's distinctive cinematic style made no distinction between high and lowbrow subject matter. As mesmerizing as Touch of Evil is, parts of it are so over the top as to be almost ludicrous. Uncle Joe Grandi, played in full sweat by Akim Tamarov, is the most buffoonish crime kingpin ever, while The Nightman, enacted with gibbering goofiness by Dennis Weaver, makes the actor's role as Chester on Gunsmoke seem regal in comparison. Uh, I'm the Nightman. Neither of these characters appeared in the novel. Both were created by Wells, who relished pushing everything in this production to extremes. But as my colleague Jake Hinkson has eloquently stated, pointing out the excesses of a film that luxuriates in excess is like criticizing a musical for having too much singing and dancing. Touch of Evil is exactly what it wants to be, a wild night in a sleazy town. Now, despite his feeling this might be his last Hollywood movie, Wells obviously had a hell of a good time making it. Now, that doesn't mean there isn't a serious core to Touch of Evil. To me, it's not so much the battle between Hank Quinlan and Miguel Vargas, but the heartbreaking relationship between Hank Quinlan and his only real friend, his longtime partner, Pete Menzies. Joseph Kalea gives a sad and subtle performance, his face etched with decades of guilt at his inability to stand up to his pal's corruption. This was one of Kalea's favorite roles, and it would be one of his last. He retired from acting in 1963 to return to his native Malta, and not even Francis Coppola could coax him out of retirement with an offer to play Don Vito Corleone in The Godfather. Kalea may have been a supporting actor in America, but in his native country, he was a national hero, the government of Malta issued postage stamps bearing his likeness in 1997. Cameraman Russell Metty had previously worked with Orson Welles on the 1946 thriller The Stranger, where his dexterity and efficiency helped Welles bring that project in on time and on budget. Metty also worked visual magic with production designer William Cameron Menzies on the 1947 gothic noir Ivy. In that same year, he orchestrated an extended tracking shot to begin Robert Montgomery's Ride the Pink Horse, presaging the amazing shot that opens Touch of Evil. At Universal in the 1950s, Meddy collaborated with director Douglas Sirk, photographing such masterful technicolor melodramas as Magnificent Obsession, Written on the Wind, and Imitation of Life. He'd win his Oscar in 1960 for Spartacus, working with its soon-to-be legendary director, Stanley Kubrick. Next week on Noir Alley, I'll be presenting an unusual transatlantic hybrid, a late 1950s Hollywood adaptation of a novel by legendary Belgian author Georges Simenon. Phil Carlson directs Richard Conti in the 1957 gangster story The Brothers Rico. Until then, remember to share your comments about this week's movie on the Noir Alley Facebook page and Twitter feed. Until next time, I'll see you in the shadows.